Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. My name is Patrick Reyes and on today's show we have Dr. Andrew Briggs. He's an expert in musculoskeletal conditions and completed his PhD at the University of Melbourne in the area of osteoporosis, spinal biomechanics, and motor control. He is also a fellow of the Australian College of Physiotherapists. And he is here to talk about World Osteoporosis Day that takes place every year on October 20th, and it's dedicated to raising global awareness of the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of osteoporosis. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, so um, can you tell us what is osteoporosis? Sure. So osteoporosis is a condition that affects the skeleton, and what happens is um, the, the mineral content of the skeleton uh, becomes uh, less, so uh, that leads to the bone becoming more um, brittle and more susceptible to fracture. It usually occurs in older people, uh, but uh, that's, not, that's not the only group of people it occurs in. I see. And um, is, can this be life-threatening, or why, would, why is it life-threatening? Osteoporosis itself um, is not life-threatening unless uh, you sustain a fracture. So a fracture can be life-threatening. For, for example, uh, about 20% of people who sustain a fracture of their hip uh, die within the first six months of sustaining that fracture. So in that context, um, it's the fracture that becomes uh, life-threatening and leads to further problems rather than uh, the bone condition on its own. And uh, earlier you said it's, uh, mo- it mostly affects uh, elderly people. Uh, is there a reason why uh, it sure. does affect them? Yeah, uh, well, as you age, like all your body systems, um, they become um, uh, less adaptable and um, normal age-related changing can increase your your risk of developing chronic diseases, uh, including osteoporosis. Um, It can be due to um, hormonal changes, particularly in females after menopause. Uh, But in younger people, it can also uh, occur because uh, it's also associated with uh, medications and other conditions that negatively affect your bones. Is this a uh, hereditary condition or does diet and exercise come to play? There is a strong genetic component related to osteoporosis. So, um, and that's, you know, related to um, your ability to... um, you know, metabolize nutrients, bone structure, you know, body size and so on. But it's equally related to non-genetic factors such as uh, your diet or your, your nutritional status, um, your, uh, how strong your skeleton is when you reached its peak um, bone mass that occurs, you know, in late adolescence. And then uh, other lifestyle factors like, um, you know, how, how active you are, your type of exercise you do, Um, your vitamin D status, which is often related to uh, exposure to the sun, uh, and your your other sort of nutritional factors like calcium and and so on. Mm. So so it is possible to prevent osteoporosis? Yes, there there are lots of things you can do to um, maintain your bone health. Um, So, for example, exercise is, is critical, and the type of exercise you do is also important. So certainly general exercise um, is important for all body systems, but particularly for the skeleton, um, high-impact um, weight-based exercise is important. So um, things like uh, swimming, for example, while great for your lungs and muscles and other um, body systems, are not as helpful for your skeleton because it's essentially a non-weight-bearing activity. Um, things like ensuring your diet is rich in um, bone-healthy nutrients like uh, calcium, vitamin D, um, trying to minimize habits that are um, unhelpful to your bones, like smoking, mm-hmm. uh, and then um, you know making sure that if you do have risk factors for um, bone loss, whether that be from another disease, from medication, or, or uh, previous history of fractures, being appropriately assessed and, and started on treatment is, is really important. All right, well, uh, I usually take, say, like two glasses of milk, uh, every day. Would you say that's the recommended daily calcium intake? Uh, the recommended daily calcium intake varies according to age and your general health status. So it's very much dependent on whether you are in fact 
calcium deficient or whether you, uh, your calcium levels are normal. But as, as a broad recommendation, um, about three to five serves of food that's rich in calcium a day is, is the general recommendation. So that might be things like milk, cheese, you know, dairy products um, uh, and other, other calcium rich food. All right, and uh, before we get to our last uh, question, uh, what's the message you'd like to give to our audience as to being part of Health Professional Radio? Uh, I think um, the main message would be that uh, having awareness that uh, your bone health can deteriorate over time, but that there is a lot to, that you can do to optimize your bone health, uh, like those things we talked about, exercise, nutrition, um, calcium, vitamin D. And if you do have risk factors for osteoporosis, to get those checked um, and, and commence some sort of intervention if it's, if it's deemed appropriate. All right. And, um, yeah, so last question. Uh, what are the top myths about osteoporosis? Uh, that's a good question. I think I think the the main myths would be that um, you don't die from osteoporosis, where in fact the, there is a high mortality risk. The second myth being that it only happens to um, elderly females is is also a myth. Um, the fact that it's just an inevitable part of aging is also a myth, uh, and the fact that you can't really do anything about it is also a myth. All those things uh, are not true. All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Andrew. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Now, you've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Patrick Reyes, and we're in studio with Dr. Andrew Briggs. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.